Hi, YouTube, and this is JTrain997 here with uh, Carolina Poison. Hello. Um, this is our podcast numero dos, um, and we have finally decided on a name, which is, you want to tell them? Yeah, uh, after much thought and um, input from you guys, which actually we didn't go with anything that you guys said. <laughs> Thanks actually. for trying. Because um, I guess we should have specified it was going to be something completely different and going to be like uh, probably become a channel on its own. Um, our new official name is Sarcasm and Sound Waves. Um, we have a Twitter. And Which we'll link in yes, the description yeah, box. Yeah, we will uh, in the description box link the Twitter for it. So go ahead and follow that. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you'll be hearing a lot more. So this is going to be more than just like figures and stuff like that. It's like video games, talking about figures. Um, Basically uh, a little bit of everything, about everything nerdy. Yeah, just about everything. So not just limited to one thing. So that's why it'll probably have its own channel. Eventually, once we get a following. Yeah, eventually. So we're going to mooch off you for a while. You won't be the first. But uh, one thing we've been uh, playing a lot lately is Injustice. We just did a, a unboxing yesterday, and that is one damn fine game. Oh, yeah. Um, I've really been concerned because, I mean, NetherRealm, the people responsible for um, Mortal Kombat's most recent reboot, they were handling <laughs> this, and I've had a lot of concerns about how it would play... But I gotta say that is a really smooth game. Yeah, I was really concerned because, you know, I'm not really that big of a fighting ga- uh, fighting person. I don't like the games. Um, but I don't say I don't like them. I'm I'm just not good at them. Um, they frustrate me. I rage quit and throw the controller. And um, the last one I played besides uh, Marvel vs. Capcom three was uh, the Mortal Kombat reboot that they did, and I was horrible at it. And so. I was like, crap, I, I hope I can actually play this game because I'm spending 100 bucks on the collector's edition. I hope I can actually um, be able to play it. And they really fixed the fighting. Like, everything seems balanced. Yeah, one of the big things, and um, I know this was a horrible, well, this was a major complaint with a lot of people that I felt was justified for Mortal Kombat was the X-ray attacks. Because mm-hmm. um, when they were making the game, like, yeah, we want this to be a game-changing move, and it is, but it also is kind of, it feels like cheating because it's like, oh, I've been kicking your ass, I've been doing the combos. You manage to get one attack off, and you completely obliterate my health bar. And this game, your super move, which is, you know, your really cinematic little move, it's the equivalent of an x-ray attack. You still squeeze the top two um, bumpers or the bottom two triggers on your PS3 controller to um, make the attack, but, like, it it doesn't really kill your health. Like, if you do it, it'll take a good, depending on what character and what move, you know, 25 to, I'd say, 35% of your health. But it doesn't really affect the match that much. Because, um, have you been watching the battle arenas? I watched a few of them. Yeah, see, with those, you know, if you notice, so you can't see who's winning or not, they don't show the health bars. So every time they showed the super move, I'm like, oh, okay, that person's going to win. But then they kept fighting. So I thought the super moves were going to be pretty strong. Um, But I'm glad they're not. I mean, um, you know, it would come in handy if it was on you, but then if the enemy was doing it, you'd be scared shitless like I was in the... uh, um, Mortal Kombat, because if they did you in Mortal Kombat, it yeah, if it was Shao Kahn did that, over. I mean, if Shao Kahn managed to use his X-ray, which he didn't need to use because he was so ridiculously overpowered, that, I'd basically just put the controller down, and be like, "Fuck it," and walk out of the room. Yeah, that that, that was probably I about bro- I probably broke two controllers that way. I've gone through a few, um, but this one also, um, like, if you get your ass handed to you, like I've noticed, it will when you retry, it'll bring the difficulty down a little bit. Not much, but enough enough to give you a confidence It's a noticeable boost. difference. Yeah, like enough to give you a little uh, confidence boost to actually win. But, uh, like, uh, they did... Did NetherRealm do uh, Marvel... Uh, not Marvel. Uh, Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe? I don't think so. Um, don't quote me on that. But I want to say that was before the big split-off where they became their own, like, privately owned company. Mm-hmm. But, um... Because, I mean, I didn't hate um, MK versus DC as much as everyone else seemed to. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying by any means it was an amazing game. Uh-huh. But, you know, I ran it, I played it, I enjoyed it for what it was. My problem, which probably was bad, um, my friend John, he uh, brought it over to my house because I never played it before. Because um, I didn't really care for Mortal Kombat games. And I played it, and this was right after coming off of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Mortal Kombat. I played it. Thought the game sucked. It was just awful. I just thought it was too slow. Like, the fighting, you couldn't move around as well, and you couldn't pull off the moves. I just thought they just did... It was like a money grab. It was a crap 
uh, job. Uh, but it probably would have been a lot better if um, I played it when it first came out. Because it was, by that time, already a dated game. And so that's why I was kind of a little concerned for this one. But more, uh, NetherRealm did not let me down at all. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's another thing. I mean, this is kind of backtracking. But how Shao Kahn was overpowered. You know, there's always that person in NetherRealm's games where you're like, oh, fuck, this is ridiculous. Um, the, mm-hmm. You know, it's no secret that the big <laughs> final boss in this is Superman. You know, kind of mm-hmm. Superman as the, what do they call him? Like the high chancellor or something like that? Or... He's basically yeah, some, something like that. Something. I, I can't remember. And um, like he's powerful. Like he's definitely the strongest one you'll find on the roster, but not in a like God I hate the world kind of a way. Because like when you fought Shao Kahn in Mortal Kombat, I wanted to die. Yeah, you're just like man, I hate the world. Um, but shit. Um, but yeah, Superman. He can be. I mean, he can he can kick your ass. So don't go in there thinking like, oh, okay, they dumbed it down some. It's uh, probably I'm. Like, the minimum, I'll have to fight him, like, three times. Yeah. Like, I never have been able to beat him uh, Yeah, me uh, either. On first the first try. Around. Yeah, but granted, I haven't... Uh, we started playing before we did the training, so that was a little harder, but... Uh, the, the training is ridiculous. I mean, it's not as bad on this game, but I hate the games where it's like, Dude, this combo is like, I'm doing that combo. You're not passing me. Yeah, you know, that one, that wake-up attack we were... <laughs> no, not the wake-up attack, uh... It was some reversal or something we were doing. We were doing exactly how it was, and it would not do it for like 30 minutes. And I was like, let me try one more time. And then it did it. Yeah. Just stuff like that just gets me. But uh, Whereas like the, the watch you were talking about, the wake-up attack, we couldn't figure it out. It's like, oh, we have to do it after he knocks us down. Yeah, well, I wish said, they would have not, told us yeah, that. Yeah, it did not say that at all. Or maybe we just didn't read it. I don't know. But I didn't see it. I'm blaming the game. So Yeah, I'm blaming the game. Uh, but the graphics, it's very beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, and what I'm really digging is the... And I mean, we we knew this was going to happen. The, the how the environments are so interactive, mm-hmm. um, like everything is really well detailed and everything flows really nicely when you're interacting with the environment. Now, um, another thing about this, and this is kind of branching off, but all the characters, like how they play differently, and especially the what you realize this when you're playing with the environments. Like, say you're playing with Bane and you go over to Superman's spaceship in the Fortress of Solitude. Mm-hmm. Bane, of, or Bane or Superman or something like that, a heavy hitter is going to pick it up and throw the thing. Mm-hmm. But you've got, like, Flash, Catwoman, somebody smaller, weaker, Deathstroke, like a human. They're just going to, like, either vault over it or plant a bomb on it. Yeah, I don't like that at all. That doesn't seem fair to me. Um, because, like you said, like, Bane, he'll go get it and throw the uh, he'll throw the car at you. But with Batman, all you do is just jump off of it and you're behind them. And it doesn't do any damage to them. But so you do that, then they're beside the car now and they can grab it and, and basically hurt you and deal because some of them deal a good damage oh yeah um but I, I didn't like that I wish that was just one thing they could, I mean that's a little nitpicky thing but see I can understand what you're saying there because you know it does kind of put you in a situation where you're like you know you're playing with this character for the first time okay can I rely on going over there and you know making this explode or am I just going to mm-hmm. flip behind them right. and you know and like you said you could put them in a much better situation to hit you yeah, because I don't know what the. Uh, do you know if the heavy the, uh, bigger enemies or the bigger characters? You know if they could uh, ride that motorcycle? No, they throw it. Oh, they they throw it. Uh, cause, yeah, for those listening, there is a motorcycle in one of them. I um, think it's outside Wayne Manor. Outside Wayne Manor. If you're a bigger one, you throw it, and if you're a smaller character, you actually get on it and ride it and run them over. Or like there was one time where I was playing as Flash and he rode it off screen, and then I hit the. R1 button, and he uh, went off screen again and uh, hit him, hit Bane, I think, for uh, fighting. So I don't know how you activate that. But that I'm not sure cool. if that wasn't a glitch or not, because I haven't seen that happen again yet. I haven't either. It was pretty funny, like, rode off screen. I was like, where's he going? Um, <laughs> I know, I kind of enjoy that, like, the characters all play a little differently. Um, and that's another thing, because all the, like, none of the characters feel like, because obviously everyone wants to play as Batman or Superman when they start this mm-hmm. game. Those are probably the characters I enjoyed least playing as. Not to say they're bad, but like all the characters have their own feel. They feel like their own fighter. They've all got their own moves, and none of the special moves are like ridiculous to a point that you can't mm-hmm. memorize them. They're all like three to four button combos. Yeah, like their attacks are all the like. Normally, when you do it, it's like left, right, A, and it does a special attack or something like that. Or um, all their cool moves are almost exactly the same for each character. But when you use them for each character, it feels like a completely, completely different attack. Which I like that because it doesn't require you to memorize all the stuff. 
Some of them, you know, like you were saying, do have special uh, combos that you have to memorize. But for the most part, you can get through a battle and still pull off a bunch of moves just by just memorizing the same old stuff. Yeah, no, like, the only thing you really had to watch for, and this became um, evident with me playing Green Arrow because he was one of the characters I was looking forward most to, there's a lot of, like, you have to the thing you do have to memorize is, like, okay, Green Arrow's attack, like, this way is going to hit up. This one's going to hit down. This is just the air. Oh, you yeah. You know, you got to kind of end... I didn't get too much time with Green Arrow yet. Um, like, if you memorize it on the fly, that's going to be... It makes him nearly impossible to get away from. Like, you can't hop over and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, he's clearly a character they built that they want you to take your time, practice with, and, you know, then once you're good with him, you're pretty much, you know, unstoppable. Yeah, because I was trying... I was noticing that when I was playing as uh, Green Lantern, which the AI, if you're playing against Green Lantern, he seems the probably most unbalanced one of them all. Because that one just knows how to do all the attacks. Him and Raven both, like, they have those range and those grab attacks, mm -hmm. and they will just kick your ass with those. Yeah, because I haven't, uh, have I fought Raven? Um, yeah, not, I fought her, but I think You're coming up on her, you haven't, I've cleared the story you have, and you're coming up on her again, and, um, you'll realize they're kind of like, it's not horrible in the story mode, but... Mm -hmm. She likes to do these grabs, and, like, you'll try to jump first. like, nope, throw you back down, throw you back yeah, down. Yeah, I know, combo, in arcade, combo, combo. like, in uh, arcade mode. And then when I was uh, fighting Green Lantern in the story mode, he would, every time I jump, he just grabbed me with his ring, tossed me down, then pulled me back, mm -hmm. and then hit me with the mallet. And, and don't get us wrong, we're not saying, like, oh, the game cheats or anything like that, but there is certain times when the AI mm -hmm. will just Slaughter, go from, yeah. okay, it's reasonable, to, okay, I'm an expert, go fuck yourself, and just take away your whole health bar. And see, that's when the game kind of, I think, uh, fixes itself to where it's like, okay, Green Lantern, it sucked. Like, I sucked fighting him. And then it happened one more time. And then after I failed twice, it, I feel like it uh, brought the difficulty down a little bit. Yeah. Which I like because then it gave me a little confidence, which I was like, okay, maybe I don't suck. Maybe I just need to figure out some more moves. But the longer you're in those uh, levels, the more you find out more and uh, more destructible stuff to use to your advantage. Yeah, it's kind of a... The computer obviously knows all the things it can touch in the environment, and you mm -hmm. don't. Yeah. So the first time's through, and in a level, you're going to get your ass kicked. I know, and I don't like playing on easy, because then I just... You know. Yeah, it's ridiculous on easy. Uh, have you played on easy at all? I'm assuming the first match in arcade is basically easy mode, because the, you can basically oh, yeah, you can do anything there. Yeah. And, uh, you're playing as Harley Quinn, uh... Yesterday, before when we were awaiting uh, UPS to arrive, and Catwoman just sat there crouched. You're fighting her. She just sat there crouched on the ground, like she in some sexual position, just like waiting for you to attack her. And you just kept walking around. She just just sitting there. Yeah, it was kind of sad. Um, now what we one of the things we haven't touched on yet is the story. And um, I think it's Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray, um, the writing team now. The, that, that, of course, is the team responsible for the Jonah Hex comic book every month now. Or it's all Star Western now. That is a, um, Jonah Hex is, of course, my big thing. Mm -hmm. I have, myself, and um, if you follow my channel, Nate from Deadpool and Friends, have all argued with Jimmy Palmiotti on Twitter. Um, I'll go ahead and go on record. He's a prick. Um, <laughs> I really don't like him. Now, Justin Gray, I don't have a problem with, but I find a lot of the choices they make with the comic, you know, iffy and the character iffy, but... All right. Um, and, you know, past arguments aside, this story, now, you haven't completed the whole thing. Um, mm -mm. I feel like, for what it is, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of little, like, one-liners that'll, like, really get you. Like, Joker is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, who is this guy? Do we know this guy who's playing Joker? No. Um, is he kind of just came out of nowhere? I'm not sure. I wasn't, I mean, Tara Strong, I know, is Harley and Raven, but that's about, and um, obviously, Kevin Conroy's Batman. And uh, how do you pronounce the guy's name? The guy from Arrow. He he plays Green Arrow in this. Is yeah, which I didn't know. Like, if you wouldn't have told me that, I would have never put those two no, together. No, like, he kind of sounds like him sometimes, but then most of the time it's like he changed his voice because, you know, this one, this Green Arrow does look older than the one he plays in the show. So maybe that's why he did that. Um, but I like that, that they actually brought him over. And, you know, if you uh, did something, something with the battle arena, uh, if you watched it earlier, did something like that, you get uh, the Green Arrow skins from the TV show. And they're supposed to be sending them out, but I've been hearing problems with they haven't sent them out yet. Um, Which is a shame, because that's one of the only skins I'd actually like. Yeah, and that's the one. I'm hoping that they'll all, like, Red Sun Pack and stuff like that become available for deals. So oh, you know they will. I hope so, because I really, the only one I really want is the one from CW, from Arrow. 
Um, but like you're saying, little one-liners. Um, just who was it? Uh, Flash and Green Lantern when they were fighting. You, they were doing the Clash. The Flash was like, "I'm faster than light," and then Green Lantern goes, "Not this light." Just like little quips yeah. like that. It's just and, great. Um, the Clash system, which I'm not all that familiar with. It you are. Um, basically, it's like okay, you trigger it somehow. Like what is it? I think it's. I think it's the right direction, the right direction, and the right trigger. Yeah, and with computer, it doesn't really work as well because you see exactly how much each other has, but mm-hmm. online you wouldn't. Mm-hmm. You wager a specific amount of your power meter, and you basically charge each other. If you win, maybe you get a damage boost, health, something like that. Yeah, if uh, if the defending person wins, they get health. If the attacking person wins, they get um, uh a damage boost, a, like a really big damage boost. And I think if you both tie, I don't think anything happens if you tie. It just knocks you both back. Uh-huh. But um, like when you do that, if the characters have some kind of connection to each other, they'll usually have a specific quip, like mm-hmm. Harley Quinn and Catwoman, and she's like, you and Joker, and she's like, don't knock it until you tried it. Yeah, and uh, Nightwing uh, was like to Harley, he was like, you're kind of hot to be psychotic. And she said, what, what did she say? She's like charmed, I'm sure. Oh, that's like right. That. Uh, but still, little stuff like that is is really nice, um, which makes you laugh and stuff. Yeah. And just and I, like it's not all like that. Like I mean, I've had mm-hmm. Deathstroke fighting like Killer Frost, and she's like, "I'll freeze you" or something like that. And he's like, "I never miss" or some you know, it just random generic yeah. one liners. Because they ever had cross paths before? I'm not all that familiar with Killer Frost. I'm not either. I don't know if you. I mean, I'm amazed she made it into the roster for this game. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of, we now have confirmed Lobo. Lobo. Which I love them. Do you know a lot about Lobo? Not too much, but I, I, I do know a little about him. Um, um, but he, he, I like his character model. I see, I haven't got to see it. All I heard was he was confirmed. Um, but I love Lobo. He's such a fantastic character. Um, because he's so ridiculously overpowered. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait to see how that car, um, translates into the game. Because he's got this hook and chain he carries around. And that's what, yeah, that's what his character model, it looks nice. He reminds me of Death from Darksiders. Bobo, and I'm going to look this up. But um, I will say this, I think DLC is for this game. I think one character at a time is a really bad way to go. I'd much rather it come in like two to three character packs. And I mean, it's not that hard. Like, I mean, you could honestly tweak the Flash's moves, reskin him and say, okay, Professor Zoom, there you go. Um, which Professor Zoom is a flat, you know, reverse Flash. He's the Flash villain. Okay. So, obvi- you know, just honestly flip the color scheme. That's all it is. And I'd be happy, you know. And then, you know, you don't have too much work on their part. We get an extra character. Mm-hmm. I mean, for God's sake, it could be an alternate costume if they wanted it to be bad enough. But True. Oh, also there's one. Uh, what was it from? It's a, f- you get Flashpoint skins. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, for Aquaman, uh... Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and... Batman? I don't think it was Batman. I can't remember. Um, I, I was just looking at it last night. I don't know how I found it, but I can't remember where it was from. And here's a picture of Lobo. Oh, that's it, awesome. Yeah, it looks really cool. You know, there was going to be a Lobo movie with um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I heard about that. Did that, that never take off? No, it was one of those things that was always on the back burner for years, and you kept hearing about it, kept hearing about it. Jeffrey Dean Morgan was like, oh, yeah, I'm really interested. It's like Ryan Reynolds in Deadpool. You keep oh, yeah. hearing about and the it, but, Venom one. Yeah, you keep hearing about it, but you know it'll never happen. I'm wanting up my Bioshock movie to happen. See, I don't... Gore Verbinski was attached to it for the longest time, but <clears throat> I believe that he couldn't do it because of uh, he wanted it to be R. And he was like, "There's no way you can stay true to the source material and make this a good movie with it being PG-13." And they're like, "Nope, we're not giving you the money because you're cutting the audience uh, in half by doing R. You're limiting it." And I think that, he yeah, just walked away. That kills a lot of movies. But with Bioshock, I don't think a movie could do it justice because there's so much in that world that you get by exploring and seeing, you know, different stuff, listening to the audio logs that mm-hmm. I'm not saying a movie's impossible. I'm saying that to, I feel like no matter how good it is, I'm going to go in and go, well, it wasn't the experience I wanted. Mm-hmm. Like seeing it for the first time, stuff like that. Yeah. Just there. Uh, let's see. Trying to think of what what could be some other nice characters for Injustice. Well, Hawkman, I'm really surprised wasn't in there. Yeah, and Hawk Girl was. I like Hawkman better. Well, Hawk Girl's a bigger Justice League mm-hmm. character. Hawkman's more Justice Society. Mm-hmm. 
Which, um, there's a lot of characters in the background here, which I don't know if those are really kind of just there, or if they're like, oh, these are the characters we'll really like to do in the future, because, I mean, you see Deadshot, Adam, Parasite. Martian Manhunter, he's in the background when you're on the Watchtower, you're getting your ass handed to you, and he's just like, hi guys. Yeah, he's, he's like, come on, help me out here. He's like, nope. Um... I mean, I'd love to see Jonah Hex, but that'll never happen. I'm smart enough to recognize that because he's really? a Western character. So? I, I just don't see it happen. I mean, I'd love it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, But it, see, the story, maybe he doesn't fit in with the story, but DLC, they can do whatever they want. True. I mean, if, if Jonah Hex comes out, I will straight up buy the game because I rented you bought. Because mm-hmm. um, can you imagine uh, his, like his super moves and stuff? That'd be really cool. Oh, yeah. But let's see who I want to see. See, I have all these obscure characters. Like, I'm a big Flash guy, so I want to see, like, the rogues make it in. Like, Killer Frost made it in, for God's sake. Let me see Captain Cold. Mirror Master? Yeah, Mirror Master is my favorite. That would probably be really interesting if Mirror Master was there for, uh, like, his fighting. Like, just, they could get really creative with it. Oh, yeah. And that'd be fun. I'm, my favorite all-time villain is Scarecrow. Love him to death. He's really near and dear to my heart. I have that um, that really old comic that, one of his earliest appearances. Yeah, one of his earliest appearances, uh, original comic. And, oh, I love that thing. I love him. And it really broke my heart that he wasn't in the game. He makes an appearance in the challenge mode, but you can't fight him. And if him. you kick somebody through the wall, you see kind of like the Arkham Asylum deal. He, like, stabs you with a knee. Yeah, and I love that uh, character model. It's one of my favorite because I'm such a Freddy Krueger fan, and I just love that glove that he has with the syringes. Oh, I love it. And um, I'm hoping they'll bring him in because his super move could probably be pretty cool. I'm betting, like, the more DLC we get, we are going to get more Batman villains. Because, I mean, just the initial launch alone, we had Batman, Nightwing, excuse me, Catwoman. Was... Well, it's a popularity contest. That's why he won the, uh, I watched it today, he won the Battle Arena. Oh, you knew that was going to happen. Yeah, because. Like, I mean, he's not just... even the best spider in that game. No, no, he's not. And everybody was fussing, like, how could he do it? But, I mean, all the attacks that this person was doing for it, holy crap. I don't know how he did all these combos, but, like. He had Superman bouncing in the air from one end of the Batcave to the other and knocked him into the elevator. That's great. Without cool. stopping. Um, but, I mean, and then the villains, um, well, I guess Catwoman would technically be on the villain list, but Bane made it in. Who else on, that was a Batman villain made it into the roster? Harley Quinn, Harley Joker. Harley Quinn, Joker. I mean, uh, you know Batman, more Batman stuff has come. I wouldn't be surprised if we see just a Batman DLC character pack. Um, Robin, I'm betting, will make it in. I'm hoping, like, with... Um uh, Man of Steel coming out, maybe they'll, uh, maybe they'll do some DLC for it. Like, uh, since they're building a hype for Superman stuff, maybe we'll see some Superman. Oh, did films. you see the new trailer? Yes. Oh, it was good. Oh God, I meant to tell you that because I was, I had it uh, on my phone last night. I was like, I watch it in the morning, and I just rolled over and I was like, Lauren, wake up, we're watching it. I can't wait. Did you? Was that what the <laughs> Zod site was counting down to? Probably. Because I, did, I didn't, like, wait to see it count down, and then I just woke up like, oh, a new trailer. Um, but, yeah, it was really, really good. I honestly wish Superman would have kept his beard. I like bearded Superman. He looks he looks really roguish. Yeah, that would have been cool. And it looks like he just doesn't care. But I like that we finally know why we have, like, the first trailer was basically Superman the Crab Fisherman. Because mm-hmm. it's like he's hiding from, like, because he's so afraid. He was on Deadliest Catch. Now, on the new trailer, and we're kind of getting off topic here, but, we, you know, this is nerdy stuff, too. Whatever. Because no... the movie's called Man of Steel, and then they go, what's the S for? He goes, it's not an S. On my phone, it stands for hope, which is bullshit. It's the symbol for House of L, as in Kal-El, Jor-El. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then she goes, how about suit? And then, like, the thing cuts her off. I'm going to be so pissed mm-hmm. off if we don't get a name drop for Superman in this movie. Don't become Marvel with your name dropping. Because oh. Marvel will, like, offhandedly be like, Oh, you know, we mentioned it that one time. So there, there's your name. Yeah, like, um, oh, what is they did? They did something like that in the Avengers, didn't they? Uh, or, like in the Hulk, like the bad guy's abomination. He goes, like, the only time you get yes. a name is he goes, oh, you could be an abomination. That's right. Iron Man 2, he goes, um, you want to be a war machine when they're fighting, but they never call him a war machine. machine. War Machine's the one I was thinking of. That's right. Um, Which is the stupidest thing ever, because you've got he, Justin he, Hammer, who's the cocky, you know, stupid little bastard, uh-huh. and that seems like a name he would give it. Do you think that they will... I'm just going to get comfortable right here. Um, do you think that they will call uh, War Machine Iron Patriot? Um, from the story I'm hearing, which is basically the either the president or somebody high up is basically asking him to kind of become the public superhero face, because Captain America is clearly with the Avengers, and the Avengers are with nobody. Like, um, because they kind of broke off from S.H.I.E.L.D. in the movie. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that we will see that. See, 
I hate they're going to do that because that's not Norman Osborn. Yeah. Because that was just a wonderful story. And I hate now since, you know, Sony has Spider-Man. We can't have it. Yeah. I mean, that'd be a perfect oh, thing to rival the Avengers. We were talking about Injustice, but I know we'll, I'll forget this if I don't say it. We now have Jamie Foxx's Electro, or as I like to call him, the homeless hobo smurf. Because <laughs> that is the worst. I hope to God that special effects are driving that look, because that is fucking hideous. Yeah, um, hold on, I'm trying to find it because, uh, whereas IGN had a bigger picture of it. I just saw it earlier. That was Nintendo Direct shit. And all those people that were pissed off that they were casting a black guy as Electro really can't complain that anymore. I mean, he's fucking blue. Yeah, I mean, he looks he looks familiar, though, like some other villain that I've seen somewhere, like, not in the Marvel Universe. Well, I mean, Electro has been, like, blue before, but it's usually, like, his whole body is energy, something like that. Yeah, like it's um really, like, neon blue, like yeah, this uh, is Dr. A, Manhattan. Yeah, this is clearly a blue man. Like, I don't know how much is going to be special effects, but... Because this wasn't, like, a leaked photo. People took a picture of this and, like, sent it to press. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, and we saw the Captain America outfit, the new one. I have seen that. It looks pretty good. Yeah, but did you see the leaked set photos? No. They basically I, confirmed I know, I it. I didn't see that. I can't find this picture anymore. The Electro one? Yeah. Well, IGN had a really close-up picture. I wanted to see, because there was something, like, on his face, too. Like, what was that? It looked like stitches or something. I'm sure it's a scar or something, because he gets struck by lightning, from what I hear. Electro, Spider-Man. Um, we still know that Paul Giamatti is the rhino. Now, we don't know if we're getting... What I'd love is man in suit, you know, like giant man, mechanical rhino. I don't want to yes. see, like, cross species, like, oh, you're a mutant rhino now. Yeah, I like the man in the suit, but then in the Amazing Spider-Man video game, I really like the character design for the rhino. Yeah, that wasn't bad. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm reserving Scorpion. judgment, but Amazing Spider-Man is a movie I come back to again and again, and every time I rewatch it, I'm like, I like it a little bit less each time. Yeah, I'm the same way. I just start picking out stuff, and I'm like, that's not right. Because yeah, I'm like, oh, giant mutant rat, and Peter... Left it there. Okay, you're a superhero. It's funny because you fight a uh, you fight a big rat in uh, the game. Well, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, is that a setup for vermin? I, I don't know, but they never mentioned it that's again. That's right, because it was vermin in the game. Yeah. Um, I completely forgot about that. And they did more cross-species genetic stuff in there, too, like you lost your powers and all that stuff. Yeah, Scorpion was in it, which I actually... I thought their design of Scorpion was clever in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, which I kind of think I might have enjoyed the game more than the movie. Um, but, oh, who was it, um, who played, um, uh, Uncle Ben? Martin Sheen? Yeah. Martin Sheen. I thought he did a wonderful job in it, though. Hey. Every time I see him on TV or in movies, I'm like, I'm so glad Uncle Ben's still alive. Yeah. Just, he did such a wonderful job. But I can't see, what was his name, Paul Giamatti? Yeah, Paul Giamatti. I can't see him as the rhino. It, it's not going to be the rhino. I want. That's why I'm saying it's either going to be, like, a mechanized robot, which I'm betting that won't happen. My money's on cross species, and it'll probably be all CGI. Okay, that, I mean that might work if they're going to cast him, um, because I'm really scared for this movie because the first one was so good to be basically a reboot and everything. They just did it so well. Um, yeah, there's stuff wrong with it, but they just did it so well. I'm scared they're not going to capture that same magic with this one. See, my problem with the first movie is that like I realized this going back and rewatching it because. It was so jumbled when they started because at first they're like, oh, this is going to fit in between a mate, you know, Spider Man 1 and 2. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, no, we're not redoing the origin. And, you know, this is straight up a reboot. We go, we spend the majority of the time in the movie with the origin, mm -hmm. which isn't even finished. Which, which I like that they did uh, web shooters, though. Yeah, that was my favorite add on. But um, my big thing is, like, I don't want this to be a trilogy where the climax is he catches Uncle Ben's killer. Oh, in this one? Yeah. Yeah, because they did let him go. I mean, they, not let him go, the, uh, they didn't. Find him yeah, because I don't want it to be like Peter catches him. He's like, "Oh, I, I've learned so much about being a hero. You can go free." I want you know Peter because you know, that's what makes Spider Man a hero. That's his big you know. I mean, realizing that the guy he let go kills Uncle Ben and it's his fault is really what makes him a hero. But that's kind of a defining moment for the character. Don't don't be a Batman. Just kill him. Just <laughs> kill him. The world would be a better place. Just kill him all off. They deserve to die. Yeah, I mean, if it's not a mate, cause if it's not a major supervillain, kill him. Because, like, I, I'm glad Lizard's alive, Electra and Reiner are in this. We know Green Goblin is coming. We could get a Sinister Six movie. We're very close to that. I would love that. The Sinister Six Game Boy game? 
It was my favorite Spider-Man game. I, I had loved that. It. I loved it, but I hate it like you had the have the cheat codes for. I mean, not cheat codes. The password if you wanted to continue. Yeah. And I'd never have anything to write down, so I had to start over every single time. Um. Uh. But anyway, we have a. Uh, wow. Why am I flicking on his name? Uh. Norman's son. Harry. Harry. Lord. I don't know why I kept wanting to say Edward. <laughs> um. Harry, we have a uh, Harry. So, do we have a Norman yet? Have they said it or any inkling who it might be? Well, the original rumor was on Christoph Waltz was going to be oh Norman, but we really never got confirmation on that. I mean, we still don't know who the guy in the room was because at first everyone's like, "Oh, Electro," and now we've got Electro, but he's black. Yeah, that ain't going to match up. So it's I'm guessing not some old white guy. My money's on either that's somehow Electro was working for Norman. Or Norman has some crazy power we don't know about yet. I mean, I don't know because we're getting Ultimate Goblin. We're not getting Goblin on a glider again. We already know that. I mean, there's just too much difference. Yeah, there was no hope for me getting my Willem Dafoe back. Oh, Willem Dafoe is a fantastic if he, Goblin. I, I would not have complained if they would have cast him back again. Oh, that's the same way I'm with J. Jonah Jameson. I'm like, whoever you cast will never amount yes, to it. Yes, yes. Um, wasn't there a thing saying that he wanted to come back for it? I haven't heard, but I really hope that's true. months ago. I think it was months ago. Um, Don't quote me on it, but that might have been just a dream of mine. But I'm almost positive, like, he was stating that he wanted to come back and do it, whether or not they're going to do that because they want to separate themselves from the old ones. But he was just did such a fantastic job. He was exactly... It was basically like he was to uh, Jonah as in uh, Robert Downey Jr. is to Tony. Like they was were apparently made, yeah. Tony, I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is now not wanting to come back, it seems, for any more Iron Man movies. He can't do that. He can't do that. Because, I mean, he is Tony Stark. Oh, yeah. I, like, he, like, just leapt off the comic books. I mean, he, he does it perfectly. And, um, what did they say? They're going, like, James, James Bond him, just basically continuing yeah. how, like, how they did. With, Nothing uh, alters, it's just another character. God, that would, that would really suck. Yeah, I, I just, it's one of those things where it's like... It's exactly the same way with Jonah. I just don't feel like I'm going to like the next guy, no matter how good he is. Um, yeah, because I don't see why Robert Downey Jr. would want to uh, retire as Iron Man at the like, just the apex of this uh, movie like trilogy almost, like this big thing. It's like okay, I did Iron Man one through three, did Avengers. I'm just going to quit. Well, Avenger. That's like the big high point. You just getting ready for Avengers two. Yeah, but um, Shane Black even said, um, the guy, of course, I'm writing and directing Iron Man 3. Yep. He said, like, yeah, I've talked to Rob, and this was months ago, but he said, I've talked to Robert, and, you know, at the very least, he's on for Iron, you know, Avengers 2 and Iron Man 4 mm-hmm. and 5. And, you know, obviously stuff has happened since then, but, you know, because I really want this because, and Eric, who's blows himself up to who you don't know, but he's big on YouTube as well, was talking about this could be the, you know, first time we actually get a good superhero franchise, you know, other than, like, the old Superman movies that goes past a trilogy. <laughs> Yeah, Uh, because I don't see how Robert could change his mind so fast and like really so much, like a complete 180 because um, one article I was reading a few weeks ago was like saying that he wanted to do it as long as people wanted him to do it. Like he was like, I don't want to go into a theater and be the person who you hear people talking about like, oh, he should quit now because he's just not doing uh, well anymore. Um, So he was saying he would do it as long as people wanted him to. So, I don't know why he changed his mind so much. Who knows? Um, we were talking about injustice. We went on a crazy sidetrack there. It don't matter. This thing, this podcast doesn't have any... You say I didn't use a notebook this time. I don't. We don't have any yeah. rails or anything. But um, I mean, we really did say all we really needed to say about injustice. Mm-hmm. I mean, I we the only thing we didn't really touch on is trophies, which that game is... It'll give you some trophies for doing anything. I mean, it's like, oh, you went into trap practice mode, trophy. Oh, you upgraded your, you know, card, trophy. But let me let me just say this: don't put if you're a game developer listening, do not put multiplayer achievements in my games. Yeah, I hate it. That's why I was. I mean, I I like playing by myself. If I'll play online, that's fine. Let me play online, but don't put achievements on there because that's so hard to do. Because I'm not gonna win. Two, three hundred matches on um, uh, Injustice. It's like one of them's like take down the top ranked guy on like a 
group match or something. It's yeah, just ridiculous. Just stupid stuff. And see, that's why I applaud Irrational Games and Bioshock Infinite for uh, make it Bioshock Infinite have no multiplayer and no multiplayer achievements. I was able to completely get all the achievements for Bioshock Infinite <coughs> because they uh, did not have any multiplayer achievements. Yeah, and the game, I mean, because like I, you know, I've said this before, I don't buy games because I feel like I don't get my money's worth. Mm-hmm. That's the first game where I've been like, okay, I got to experience every facet of this game completely and entirely, and I can say I got my money's worth. It's not like, well, I didn't really get my money's worth because I don't game online, and you know, there's a huge... It's like when you buy Halo. Mm-hmm. If you're buying Halo for just the story, you'll get your money's worth, but if you aren't going to do multiplayer, you should only pay about half that. Yeah, see, that's what I was thinking because uh, I know people have been saying that there may be a, a, a new Call of Duty coming out that... or not coming out, but there's like this thing there people are like rumors saying that there may be one that's like twenty, thirty dollars and you buy it online and it's just multiplayer only. And they may have another one that's just story only. That would be awesome. Pay forty bucks for story. If you want multiplayer, buy a download for it for twenty bucks more. Yeah, because I'm not the I mean, neither you or I are really the good you know the multiplayer. Only, yeah, guys. the only one that I will dedicate some time on is Halo. I've always been a big Halo fan. I haven't uh, played multiplayer much on Halo 4 just because, like, with school and work and stuff, I've just been so busy. And then this, like, games that just right after Halo just started coming out of the woodwork like crazy. So uh, this summer, during the summer drought, I'm going to probably put in a good bit of time online on Halo 4. But that's the only one I actually play multiplayer on Um, because I don't do Assassin's Creed. I have not even touched the... uh, Multiplayer disc for Assassin's Creed Three. Um, what else? I don't play Call of Duty and anything like that. I did play all the Call of Duty games. I, I thought the stories were interesting, but the second one, Black Ops Two, I played the first level. And I was like, I've played this before, and yeah. just stuff like that. I don't know. Um, I don't understand why they need to do so many multiplayer achievements. Um, and see, that that's really what irks me is that games are getting to the point, like Call of Duty games, mm-hmm. those things are pretty much built for multiplayer. Yeah. I mean, like the, story the story is just, a tack on. Yeah. Uh, because I thought uh, Modern Warfare 1 and 2 were phenomenal, the stories, because they actually tried with the story. And the third, uh, mm-hmm. the third one was all right. And then Black Ops, I was like, okay, this is interesting. But then they're uh, paying all these celebrities to come on. I was like, okay, it could have been better. And then the Call of Duty Black Ops 2, it's like, Eh, here's a little story, and but here's what you really want, multiplayer. Yeah, but, um, crap, I can tell Oh, like, when Battlefield 3 came out, Battlefield 3 is getting all these ridiculously good reviews, mm-hmm. and I hadn't played it, and I asked one of my friends who was, like, obsessed with it, and I'm like, should I get it? And he's like, you don't game online, right? And I'm like, yeah, and he goes, yeah, don't bother. No, that story mode was so boring, I got to, like, the third mission, I was like, this sucks. And I played online, because I played the beta for it online, I was like, okay, this is a pretty decent multiplayer, but I don't play it. And I just get my ass whooped because I don't play these type of ultra realistic shooters where you have to aim like uh, shoot and like uh, account for the bullet drop and stuff like that. You have to lead your gun. I don't do well with that. I mean, I could do it, but I just don't spend that much time with it. So I always die a lot. Um, so yeah, and I, I I traded it back in the GameStop like two or three days later. So I basically just wasted sixty bucks. Um, and we're not knocking multiplayer by any means. It's just neither of us really have the time or, you know, you know, because there's people on Halo who are just, like, gods at Halo. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they do nothing else for their life, but... I mean, that used to be me. Like, <coughs> like Halo, I would play nonstop when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Like, I was one of those guys. Like, I had the recon helmet. I played with people from Bungie. I did all that stuff. I was wonderful. I Like, no scope, sniping, and stuff like that. Just, like, swipe the sniper over and get headshots crazy i've been in tournaments and everything and then i stopped and i lost all of those skills and because i don't have time anymore and then now i'm just like because it is something you have to practice at yeah because you have to be good yeah if you don't use it you lose it because uh, because i went on there uh, for halo 4 and i'm like all right let's go <laughs> headshot fuck yeah see that's the thing like and that's for people like us like the point of getting into multiplayer again because like like we said i just said we don't have time for it mm-hmm. um because there's people on here who are just so ridiculous. You know, you get on Halo 4 and you see these wet work people. And it's like, okay, well, I know I'm not going to enjoy this match. Because mm-hmm. those fuckers are going to decimate us in the first 20 minutes. I mean, well, two minutes. Yeah, the first week of playing Halo 4, I was, like, in teams with people who, like, were, like, level 40 and stuff like that. And I'm like, holy shit, this game's been out less than a week. Uh, but one thing that I that I hate about Halo Reach, 
I only had two achievements left to unlock. I almost completely, because I got all the multiplayer achievements and everything, I had to get a certain level in um, online, and I had to buy certain equipment after get, reaching that level. And um, I didn't want to play online anymore because I didn't want to. Um, uh, I didn't want to go online because it was going to force me to update my achievement list for the three map packs that came out. So that would add like 15, 20 more achievements I'd have to get. And I didn't want to have to do that because I wanted to have the one, the original achievements and me completed them. So I tried to play Firefight with my friends offline. And so instead of it giving me the points for my uh, multiplayer uh, uh, rank, mm -hmm. it wouldn't give me all of them. I could play for four hours and only get 60 points. And if I play for two seconds online, I could get like 200 points. So they completely messed up. So you can't get you had. They forced me to play online when I didn't want to. I like local, um, local multiplayer a lot better than uh, online. And Bungie forced me to do that, and I didn't like that. So so I just gave up on Halo Reach because they added like all these multiplayer packs and all these achievements that there was no way I had time to get. Excuse me. But uh, let's see. We've been going on for a little over forty minutes now. I think it's about time to wind it down for this week's alright well that's us talking about injustice and god knows what else we rambled on about Spider-Man Robert Downey Jr. we went way off yeah but you got your money's worth so that being said this is J Train 997 and Carolina Poison uh, you can make, we're going to um, uh, link the, the Twitter yeah the Twitter that's what it's called yeah, the Twitter uh, in the description and um yeah, hope you enjoyed it.